Hi friends, welcome to Upa Studies YouTube channel. This is continuation to the fabric playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about understanding data pipelines in fabric. So if you are familiar with Azure Data Factory, then these data pipelines in fabric are like almost similar to you. Like, like it's the same thing, right? So what you do in Data Factory, it is the same thing got implemented in fabric too. So fabric data pipelines and Data Factory pipelines both are same, okay? So what is this data pipelines? Basically nothing but like a sequence of activities which you want to run by orchestrating it that will basically extract the data and do certain transformations and load into certain destination. Okay. So we generally call it like a extract the data, transform the data and load the data, a ETL process. So if you want to do the ETL process, then basically you have to use data pipelines in fabric. So please consider watching my data factory playlist because there I have discussed about everything in detail. So in the fabric playlist, it will not go that deep, but still I will be covering the stuff here. But if you want to go very deep, then check my data factory playlist. So how these pipelines will look like, uh, let's see that quickly and then come back to here. So for now understand that pipeline is nothing but like a sequence of activities. Okay. So let me go to my browser first. And uh, you see here, I have this workspace. This is my workspace. So let me add new item here and uh, let me, let me cancel it. So let me add new item and take the pipeline here, right? So let me take the data pipeline option and pipeline to let me hit create button to create this pipeline. So this is like a mostly theoretical class. Okay. Theoretical video. Uh, in upcoming videos, we will implement the actual real pipelines too. So once you create a pipeline, which is pipeline two, hit this start with a blank canvas and uh, for now I'm selecting some activity just to, to load the U, view, right? So you see here, this is how the pipeline will look like. And uh, in this canvas, we will try to add activities which we want to run. Activity is nothing but like a task what you want to perform. You can add more than one activity. You have here one activity already. So you can add one more activity. You can add one more activity and you can chain them too. So after running this, run this, running this, run this. You can do that. Okay. And every activity, whenever you select it, the below panel will show the settings for that activity. Okay. So if I don't select any activity, if I click on a white canvas, then the below settings talk about the settings for the pipeline level. But the moment I select any activity, you see the settings got changed. These are the settings for that particular activity. Okay. So basically this is how the pipeline UI will look like and you will add the logic here using the activities. If I go back to my one note. So when you create a data pipelines, there are few concepts we should know. One is the activities. Another one is the pipeline parameters. Okay. And another one is the pipeline runs. So this is this is pipeline parameters actually. Okay. So let me change like pipeline parameters. Okay. So what are these core concepts? What is activities means? So activity is nothing but like a uh, something using which you can perform certain task. Okay. So here, so let's assume uh, I have a pipeline. So let's assume this is like a white canvas area where I have to create a pipeline. Okay. So generally let's assume the first activity I want to copy some data. So for that there is something called a copy activity. So I wanted to take data from such certain source and copy that into some destination or a sync location. So I will use a copy activity. Then maybe I have to delete some data. So maybe some delete activity, right? Then I have to run some stored procedure. So maybe a stored procedure activity. So basically you can add multiple activities there and you can chain them. And that's so you will create a pipeline. So activity is nothing but like a task. An activity is nothing but like a, a encapsulated task what you want to perform. Okay. So now if I go back to my fabric playlist, see here I have a pipeline activity. So now I want to add one more activity. So what I can do here, I can go to the activities here. I can select maybe delete activity as I said. So after copy activity, I want to run delete activity, right? So I can connect them like this. Then maybe I want to run a stored procedure activity. So I will search for a stored procedure activity here. So I can search like stored procedure activity. So yeah, I got it. So I will add the stored procedure activity. So after delete activity, I will connect it like this. So activity is nothing but like a, a something which encapsulated the task what you want to perform. Okay. So now if I go back, so there are two types of the activities generally. Transformation, data transformation activities, counter flow activities. What that mean? 
So any activity that will perform some kind of a data movement or a transformation, then that is called the transformation activities. So it is like a two subcategories data transformation activities, control flow activities. The activities which will work on the data and they will try to delete the data, copy the data, transform the data, means changing the data, maybe querying the data. So such activities comes under the data transformation activities category and the activities which will help you to implement the flow. When I say flow, maybe first I want to loop the folder names, then I want to have a if condition. So then I have to have store some value in a variable, use some parameter. So these kind of activities that will help you to control the flow. Those are called like a control flow activities. Okay, so if I go back to my browser, this copy activity is a, it will basically copy the data from one place to another place. So it's a transformation category activity. Delete, it will delete the data. So this is, a, like, this is also like a transformation category activity. Stored procedure also runs some queries. So everywhere you are playing with the data. So these are like a data transformation activities. But whereas uh, if I if I go to activities and I see there is something called maybe for each activity, it is like a loop. So inside the loop, I want to perform copy activity. So maybe to the loop, I will give the file names and it, will, it should take all the file names and perform the loop inside of it. So here the for each loop called like a control flow activity, right? So, so for this, I, I give the files, maybe uh, certain file names or certain files or folders and inside that I used a copy activity, right? So it will take each file and perform the copy. Each file then perform a copy. So here like it's like a control flow. So I'm controlling the flow of the pipeline execution. So such activities are called like a control flow activities. So two categories, data transformation activities, control flow activities. We will deeply discuss about these activities in our upcoming videos too maybe. So for now have that idea. So now going back to my one note and there is something called parameters. What is pipeline parameters? So imagine like imagine like a function, right? So for example, uh, if I go to whiteboard and if I clear this canvas, so let's assume generally uh, you, you, you may be familiar with a little bit of coding. So generally what will happen is uh, let's assume you are creating a function called maybe addition function. Okay. So when you create a addition function, you generally define some parameters there, maybe pass a comma b. Then inside the function, you will be returning that a plus b value, right? So here, whenever I want to call this addition function, right? Whenever I want to call this addition function, I simply do like this, right? So I will do addition, then I will pass two comma three. So these two comma three values go into the parameters A and B, and it will perform the addition accordingly here and return back the data, right? So if you closely observe, this method has parameters and parameters are helping this method to reuse according to my use. Tomorrow I can pass maybe four and five values also, right? So maybe four and five also I can pass, right? So the function is getting reused now. Whatever the values I am passing it there, that values are coming here and accordingly that logic is running. So if you think about this whole thing by keeping a pipelines, so let's assume you have a pipeline and if it, it has some parameters and whatever the values I pass to that parameters, accordingly the pipeline will run, okay? So that's how the parameters will help. Parameters will get you the dynamic nature. So let's assume a scenario. Let's assume I have a pipeline. So let me take a pin here. So let's assume I have a pipeline and uh, this pipeline maybe copy a file from source some, from some source location, maybe from uh, data lake to uh, maybe it will copy into some SQL table. Let's assume that way, right? Now I create a parameter on top of this pipeline. Uh, which will take the file name. Then what will happen? Whatever the file name I pass, that file will get load into the SQL table, right? So I get a dynamic nature. So whenever I run a pipeline, I will give you a file name. Only that file will copy. So I am able to accomplish the dynamic nature. If I hard code the pipeline name value, sorry, file name value inside a pipeline, then it will always copy the same file. But the moment I make that file name parameter, so whenever I run that pipeline, right? Whenever I run that pipeline, that's when I can pass the value into the parameter and accordingly that file will get copy. So dynamic nature, right? So parameters is also like a very important concept within the data pipelines concept. Okay, so we will see that practically too. Now pipeline runs. What that means is whenever you are running any pipeline, it will actually execute and it will have some uh, run ID assigned to it. 
from that run id it's a unique id uh, which uniquely you, you can identify let's assume if you have a pipeline one if you ran 10 times then 10 pipeline run ids will come so to explain you that so let me clear this canvas so let's assume i have a pipeline called pipeline one so let me take a pen here so i have a pipeline called pipeline one so and i and i i ran this first time okay and again i ran it so run two and again i ran is so run three right so i am running it four times here let's assume so every time a unique id will come so that is called run id okay so this unique id is called run id so this run id will help you to uniquely identify that particular execution alone right that particular execution alone and you can go and see what happened inside that execution you can see that so run ids will help you to to point to a specific execution of a pipeline and see what happened in that execution so to make sense it in little practical way so let me delete all these activities here and let me add a simple activity called wait activity that will simply pass the pipeline execution for one second so i'm adding an activity called wait here and if i see inside a pipeline act wait activity settings it will wait the execution for one second so what i wanted to do is let me run this and see the run id of it so to run that i am going to run and i am hitting the run button it is asking me to save before running so i am saving this pipeline and uh, let's wait the save of the pipeline to complete and you see it started executing a pipeline running as well so once the pipeline execution completes or when it is running under the output tab also you can see the execution and you can see there is only one activity called a wait activity which executed successfully and you see there is a run id also associated with it right so this particular execution has this run id so now let me re one once again let me run this so i am running this once again so two runs i am doing it so let's wait for the run this the, the id will change now so let's wait for the run to complete so run got completed so now i wanted to see the history all the two executions separately i want to uh, point to so i can hit the view run history and when i go there you see there are two executions because two times i have run it and i can click the go to monitor and i can see that executions too so let me hit go to monitor to monitor that executions and i can see both the executions there and uh, if you see here uh, i can i can open these executions by clicking that so i i am opening a first execution and when i open it i see a different run id here which is starting with 9 right maybe you are not able to see this screen right so what i will be doing it is i will be coming back to monitor hub and uh, i will click this icon so this will also help you to display the run id you see here the run id right so this is the run id now if i open the run id for this pipeline it will be different so if i go and if i open it it will be different see that it's a different run id so same pipeline if i execute 100 times also a different execution id a run id will come and you can open that executions from here and you can see what happened so you, we have only one activity so i can see that one activity executed successfully when it started duration all the stuff if you want to rerun you can run rerun from here as well okay so that is like a pipeline runs information so pipelines help you to perform the etl operations extract the data from one location perform the transformations and load it into some location the etl operations these are similar to data factory pipelines if you know data factory pipelines it is exactly same no change and in the pipelines basically you will put activities to perform that whole etl and these activities are into two categories um, data transformation activities that will transform the data control flow activities that will control the flow of the pipeline execution and there is something called pipeline parameters so it is like a getting a dynamic nature so if i if my pipeline have a parameter whenever i run i will pass some value to it that value go inside the pipeline accordingly the execution will happen classic example maybe a file name is a parameter on a pipeline i will say abcd file then it will copy abcd file i will say xyz file it will copy xyz file pipeline runs this is like a a unique id for every execution of the pipeline using that you can monitor that particular execution and you can take a decision or debug if something is going wrong so i hope this is helpful session uh, we will try to see little more practical in the upcoming videos are around the pipelines so meanwhile i will encourage you to watch my data factory videos guys so that is exactly similar and i deeply explained everything there so it is same that so thank you for listening have a nice day thank you